Hello, I'm Graham Lewis, and in this short video, we're going to do the long division of 6x cubed minus 11x squared minus 4x plus 4 by x minus 2 in our heads using equating coefficients. This is a far quicker way than using long division, and I think you'll find it really useful. So let's assume that we've put 2 into the polynomial and got 0, so the remainder is 0 when x minus 2 is divided into the polynomial, so we know x minus 2 is a fact by the fact theorem. So we're assuming we know that's true. So the idea behind equating coefficients is basically you're treating it as an identity. So you've got your polynomial 6x cubed minus 11x squared minus 4x plus 4, and you're saying that's equal to, we know x minus 2 is a factor, so we know it goes into another polynomial polynomial and we want to find out what this polynomial is. Now, um, so basically the idea is I'm going to treat this as an identity so I'm going to use the congruent symbol uh, with three equal signs there. Now, on the left hand side we're going to equate coefficients. So I'm going to equate the x cubed terms first. So on the left hand side x cubed terms, I've got 6 on the left, so I need 6 on the right. So basically there's only one way to generate x cubed, and that's by putting a 6x squared there. There it is, the 6x cubed. So the first term is always really, really easy. Actually the constant term is also really easy. If we equate constant terms, you can see I've got 4 there, so I have to have 4 on the right hand side if it's identical. So the only way to generate your constant constant term is negative 2 times whatever number I put in as the question mark there. So clearly if I want a positive 4, I know this has to be a negative 2. So I know the first term is 6x squared, and I know the constant term is negative 2. Actually, I'm going to erase the negative 2, because that's going to be my check that I've got everything correct at the end. But remember, we know that the last term is negative 2. OK, so now let's compare on the left-hand side. Let's do the x squared terms. I've got minus 11x squared terms that the coefficient of x squared is minus 11. So I have to have minus 11 on the right-hand side. Now, there are only two ways to generate x squared. Minus 2 times the number of x squareds, so that would generate a minus 12x squared. And the other way of generating x squared would be x times whatever number of x's I put into there. So there are only two ways of generating, and that's why this is so beautiful. There's only ever two ways of generating these middle terms. So we've got minus 12x squared, and we actually don't want minus 12x squared. We want minus 11x squared. So what I need to do, of course, is add a 1x there, because because minus 12x squared add 1x squared gives me the minus 11x squared. So I know it has to be a 1x there. Now we're going to do the same with x's. So on the left hand side, my number of x's is negative 4. My coefficient is negative 4. So if I have negative 4x on the left hand side, I have to have negative 4x on the right hand side if they're identical. At the moment, I've got minus 2x squared on the right hand side. I want minus 4, so I need to somehow generate another minus 2x to get to minus 4x's. And of course, again, there's only two ways to generate it. The number times x is one way, the other one is x times a number. So I know that this number here has to be minus 2, because that will give me the minus 2x, minus 2x, gives me the minus 4x. So we can see really simply that that has to be minus 2. Now the beautiful thing is, we talked at the beginning that we knew this number was minus 2, because minus 2 times minus 2 makes positive 4, so it all fits in really nicely and we know we've got the factoring right. So that's how to use equating coefficients. Just for uh, uh, sort of finishing this off properly, let's just factor this fully. Of course, 6x squared plus x minus 2 goes to 3x and a 2x, and it would be a plus 2 and a minus 1. And then we fully factored the polynomial. So I think equating coefficients, it's always the way I do these. Um, it's much, much quicker and more efficient than doing long division. So I hope you enjoyed this video and you will find it useful. Obviously, like anything, you have to practice the skill to get better. And if you want to watch any of my other videos or make any suggestions and comments below, please do so. Thank you very much.